got questions, we've got answers, we have the man to answer them, Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Partners. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. Hey, good to be back with you, Rob. Good to have you back. Uh, my inbox is full of questions, uh, one of which goes like this. Can I use the money in my HSA to pay for long-term care insurance, Medicare Part B premiums, Medicare HMO premiums, Medigap premiums, and or employer-sponsored retiree health insurance premiums? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. That was pretty good. Hey, yeah. Uh, yeah. You could you could use it to pay for qualified medical expenses, uh, which includes long term care costs. It also includes uh, your 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 health insurance premiums. You can use it for that as well. Yes. So uh, you do have that option of of using your uh, HSAs are very flexible, in incredibly flexible, and it's important to realize too that um, unlike some other accounts, you can kind of um, stack your expenses, if you will, and hold on to them for the future, right? So let's say uh, you had $10,000 of uh, nursing home expenses this year. You can kind of, if you paid those out of pocket, provided you didn't take a deduction for it, which a lot of people today can't take a deduction with the high standard deduction amount, with the uh, still the need to exceed seven and a half percent of your AGI. If you don't deduct those amounts, kind of can use those to bank $10,000 of future tax-free HSA distributions. So for argument's sake, if you did this for 10 years, uh, every year you had $10,000 of these nursing home care costs. I, I don't know who's in a nursing home for $10,000 a year, but I'd like to know where that is. Uh, <laughs> but let's just, you know, just as a nice, simple example, we've got our $100,000 of total expenses in, in, in 10 years. If you have $100,000 in your HSA at that time, you can take it out tax and penalty free even if you had no medical expenses in that year, because you essentially bank them. This is why keeping good records is so important. And candidly, why sometimes today people are like, eh, I don't need to keep track of my medical expenses because you know, I'm not deducting it. Well, you should anyway, um, particularly if you have an HSA, you never know where that might come in handy in the future. Yeah. So the reader didn't ask this question, but I hear it a lot about the right time to use the HSA money when you might be, for instance, in a higher tax year than others and where you might otherwise have to liquidate and, and incur capital gains or uh or uh, rm or you know ordinary income from your ira that well, using the hsa in those high tax years is a good strategy yeah there, there's a few things you could do one certainly is if you have a particularly high income tax year using it then uh or uh particularly if if, if absent using the hsa you'd have to dip into something else that would add more. Like if you have a bank account sitting there, you just had a high income tax year, you can use your bank account without adding to your taxable income. But if it's, oh, I've got to sell these um, these stocks or I'm going to tap into my IRA, then yeah, taking the HSA in that particularly high income tax year can be useful. Um, other than that, it sounds a little, uh, it sounds a little wonky, but uh, right before you die, like that... <laughs> That has given your HSA the greatest amount of time to compound, and presumably you've had, or, or, or presuming you've had these healthcare expenses over the years. Well, you've accumulated the greatest amount that can come out tax and penalty free. Now you don't want to die with it. That's not good, right? You don't want to die with uh, with with the now. Yes, you can use it a little bit after death to pay for the decedent's healthcare expenses, but the, the idea here would be essentially, you know, let it compound for as long as you can. It, it, not like people tend to have less medical expenses as they age. So even if you only put in $20,000, let's say the first five years you had an HSA, you could let that compound and compound and compound. And then suddenly, you know, when you're 65, 70 years old, you've got, I'm just going to make this up. Hypothetically, you've got a, you know, a $150,000 account balance. That's $150,000 that could come out tax and penalty free. Whereas if you took it out, you know, 30 years sooner or 40 years sooner, or whenever you had that 20, it would only be 20,000. Yeah. So provided you think you can grow that account balance more, you know, let's say than inflation, uh, you, you're in generally in good shape by letting that HSA sit as long as you can. Again, provided you're using it for medical expenses that are accrued during your lifetime. All right. I know we answered one more question than the reader asked, but nailed them both. That's all right. Hey, listen, two for the price of one. I like it. <laughs> Good. Buy one, get one pre-sale here today at Ask the Hammer. Uh, if you'd like to ask us the question, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. 
Give us a shout. Email us right here at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to seeing your questions in our inbox real soon. Mm-hmm.